Wind turbines like this one here produce lots of clean green energy, but they also put lots of pressure on the grid. Now, if you've got a home storage battery, then you can be part of the solution. Let's head back to the office and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> So what do I actually mean by wind turbines and renewable energy is causing an issue to the grid? Well, to understand that, you need to understand inertia. So inertia is like, think of a car engine and you have a flywheel. It's a weight, it spins and it carries energy. And what it does is if you hit a bump in the road, you speed up or you slow down, it stops your engine from having big shocks to the system. And the energy grid in the UK relies on inertia as much as a motor car relies on its flywheel. So inertia essentially for the UK energy grid prevents issues when the grid is under massive pressure, i.e. we all turn our kettles on at the same time, we all plug our EVs in at the same time, the grid feels the pressure. Now, this has been an issue in the grid since day one, but it's never really reared its ugly head when we had fossil fuels because we used to have gas turbine powered by coal or fossil carbon-based products. And what they would do is they would spin up these turbines and these turbines would keep energy powering the grid. And if the grid started going out of phase, then we just used to open up the gas tap and we used to let more gas in and that would keep that turbine, keep that inertia moving. But this isn't the same for renewables because let's look at a wind turbine. Now wind turbines are already pretty controversial and can cause some contention, so we don't really want to get into that. What I want to talk you through is the different types that are out there and how they operate. So to do this, we had a little bit of a Blue Peter moment. I got my hot glue gun out and I created a direct drive wind turbine. That looks like some sort of yeah. give yourself pipe bomb. Will you yeah. shut up? You bloody shut up. Maybe some money. I just have. Now, as you can see, as I've created this, we've got the turbine on top of the bottle. We've got an LED that's indicating the power we are generating. And I had to put a drill on it because I couldn't blow hard enough to actually get the turbine to move around. But what I'm demonstrating here is, as the wind speed adjusts, it causes some problems with the power generation. Now, as you can see, the LED is fluctuating in the amount of power being generated. Now, this is a pretty basic rudimentary experiment. I'm just trying to demonstrate how wind turbines have some issues when they come to creating energy because you have different wind speeds. Sometimes there isn't enough wind, sometimes there's too much wind. They have some design features to try and regulate the amount and speed of the actual rotations. Now, where this becomes an issue is that when the wind turbine is up to the correct speed, it's producing energy and it's consistent. But when it drops away, the grid suddenly loses that inertia. And this is what is causing the issue. Now, there are other types of turbine that are produced. Some have gearboxes like this one here. Now, what this gearbox does is it allows us to get into that operational window much easier by gearing down the main turbine shaft. Now, the issue with the gearbox wind turbines is that they do burn out over time and create lots of maintenance and additional costs. And obviously what we're trying to do here is reduce carbon emissions, but also reduce cost. And also solar has this issue too, because solar panels are like wind turbines, they're pretty inconsistent. They come on, they come off, and when the grid is looking for reliability, you can't really rely on renewable. So what is the solution? Because we can't really go back to burning fossil fuels and we don't really want to have power outages like we did in the 1980s with the miners strikes. But what we are seeing is more frequently is the power dropping in the grid. But there is a solution to help support the renewable transition to green energy and that is via these home batteries. Now, what we've been doing here at Heatable is testing a piece of equipment that uses domestic home batteries to inject voltage and correct the frequency 
in the UK grid. And because we have so many batteries assets on the grid, we have more than one megawatt of storage, we can participate in these schemes. So we set about installing some of the hardware at a property that has one of these, an Alpha ESS battery system. We connected it to the servers and we started earning some income, but it's early days. Let's take you through how it all works. So on the right hand side here, we've got a comm switch, a pretty basic bit of kit. But next to that is the brains of the unit. This is the bit that's plugged directly in to the national grid servers, communicating the outputs of these meters. So these are specialist meters that are approved by the grid. And what they're gonna do is communicate and allow us to inject that voltage and frequency. We've got some connections on the bottom of the unit because it can work with various different setups, standalone batteries or hybrid solutions. And on the subject of batteries, we connected our unit to this Alpha B3 Plus. So this is the actual battery we're using. It's an Alpha ESS. Now only certain batteries are approved on this piece of hardware because they need really efficient communication links and a high board rate. Now this is the B3 Plus 10 kilowatt hour and this is wired directly to our unit via a comms cable. Now the actual installation was pretty straightforward. I was there with electricians on the day and they were talking me through how it actually works. It was actually pretty interesting, but essentially all we needed to do was take the AC output from our battery and connect it straight to that approved meter. We also then had to take a power supply to the unit and, and then finally, we connected a comms cable. Now this comms cable does two things. It connects to the battery and it takes control of the battery because obviously if we spot an event, maybe the grid in the area is starting to drop frequency, we need to respond. We need to be able to communicate to the battery to activate it and start exporting to support the grid. But we also need a hardwired internet connection. Now, this was pretty tricky in this property because the Wi-Fi connection or the router was on the other side of the house and it was pretty difficult to get a LAN cable all the way through the property. So what we opted for was a TP link and then we hardwired that straight into the unit itself. And you can see the connections on the side of the Alpha battery. So we already had some meters connected up. We had a BMS lead and then we connected to the RS45 connection and that is what's doing all the communicating to this system. So that was the installation complete, but how do you actually earn money from this device? Well, essentially the way it works is if your battery asset can support the grid via those approved meters, then the grid will pay you to do so because what they don't have to do is fire up a gas turbine, burn carbon and start polluting the atmosphere because they pay a penalty each time they do that. So when you offer up your battery to support the local grid, what you're doing is keeping the lights on, but you're also going to be paid pretty handsomely for it. Now, the manufacturer of the hardware and the meters claims you can earn between 400 and 700 pounds a year by having one of these devices connected to an Alpha ESS battery. But obviously here at Heatable, we like to put things to the test. So. Once the battery was installed, we connected it to the smart app. Now, interestingly, within the first three days, they've already earned five pounds from this software. Now, what's cool is that the payment goes straight into your bank account. It doesn't go into some sort of voucher scheme or you've not got to get a check once every month. It's a direct debit or a backs payment straight into your current account. Now what you also get with this app is a real time viewpoint of what's going on in the property. So much like you do with the Alpha Cloud system, you can see what your solar generation is, you can see what your home load is, you can see when you're exporting, and you can also see these events. And there is other schemes that you can take part in. It's not just about grid support, frequency, or voltage injection. You also can take part automatically in something called the DFS schemes. Now DFS is the demand flexibility service. This is where the grid pays you not to use the grid and to use your battery. 
Now it's been around for a couple of years. It sort of changes all the time. It's not as lucrative as it once was, but the benefit with this system is it's all automatic. You don't need to go out, turn your main supply off, turn your battery on. It's all managed via that communication link. Now the manufacturers of the product are also telling us that there is going to be more of these DFS events because what's actually happening is that the local DNOs, the people who manage the network in your area, not just the national grid, are having their own events because obviously different areas are under different pressures at different times. So the earning opportunity with this kit comes from the DFS scheme. It comes from this voltage and frequency injection payment and you can also benefit from arbitrage this is where you buy energy cheap at night and you use it throughout the day but you're probably already doing that anyway so i'd sort of discount that element of the kit they do claim one other feature and that is efficiency management now obviously we're yet to put this to the test to fully understand it but what they're saying is sometimes if you've got a really small load to cover with your battery it's not actually that efficient to turn the inverter on because if you've got a five kilowatt inverter a 200 watt load then the efficiency rating of converting that dc to ac for a 200 watt load is probably not worth it so what they're saying is they can control the battery and say, hey, look, it's a small load, don't turn on, don't waste the battery storage. We're gonna earn more from that later on. So it all sounds pretty impressive, but before we put this on the market, we want to test it and we wanna share the results with you, the viewers of the Heatable YouTube channel. So we're gonna be doing some updates over the next couple of months, sharing the experience with the product, how much the client has earned from either DFS or from this voltage injection scheme, and to see, is it actually worth it? And if it's a success, then you may start to see them going out with the packages that we sell for solar and battery systems. So what's super important is to make sure you don't miss the updates from this groundbreaking scheme. Then what you need to do is subscribe to the Heatable YouTube channel. And also if you've enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up.